Hello students, welcome to the bridge course. In this video, we will discuss about the gravitation. In previous classes, we have already learned about the motion of objects. For example, the ball thrown in the air, the moving car and the moon orbiting around the earth, etc. There are many examples for motion of a body. But what is the cause for the motion? And we already know that the cause is force. So what is force? Force is the push or pull that causes object to move, change direction, slow down, speed up or to stop. Now let's learn about gravitational force. Gravitational force, the force that holds you to the earth. In this picture, the force pulling this man downwards and this force is nothing but the gravitational force. Gravitational force is one of the four basic forces of nature and the four basic forces of nature are electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force and gravitational force. Among the basic forces of nature, the gravitational force is the weakest. Gravitational force between two bodies is mutual. That means both the bodies are applying gravitational force on each other and this force acts along the line joining the two bodies. According to the Newton's third law of motion, the gravitational force between two bodies also constitutes an action-reaction pair of forces. We have a common understanding that the heavier object falls with a greater speed than the lighter object when both thrown from the same height. But Galileo proved that this is not the right case. He showed that gravitation accelerates all objects at the same rate. That is acceleration due to gravity small g. And the value of acceleration due to gravity is already known to you, right? That is 9.8 meter per second square or nearly equals to 10 meter per second square. Okay. And all the objects are accelerates with the same rate, right? So now, the first to propose the gravitational law is Sir Isaac Newton. So according to Sir Isaac Newton's universal law of gravitation, every body in this universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. Right, that means if we are considering two bodies, for example, here in this picture, Earth and Moon are there. Okay, they are attracted because of the gravitational force. So here, if M1 is mass of the Earth and M2 is mass of the Moon, then the gravitational force between Earth and Moon is directly proportional to product of their masses, that is M1 into M2, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Okay, so this is the Newton's law of gravitation. So let's study this law. To understand that, consider two bodies of masses M1 and M2 separated by a distance R. So we have a picture of that, right? Here we have a picture of the diagram for that. According to the Newton's law of gravitation, the force of attraction between the two bodies is. So here force is represented by letter F. And mass of body 1 is m1, mass of the body m2 is m2 and the distance between th these two bodies is r. Then the force f is directly proportional to m1 into m2 and it is inversely proportional to r square. And when we combine these two proportionals, proportional quantities, then the force is directly proportional to m1 into m2 and divided by r square. And after removing that proportionality sign, we have this final equation that is F equals to capital G into M1 into M2 divided by R square. Here G is universal constant. It is universal gravitational constant. And this capital G's value is 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11. Okay. So once again, the force between these two bodies whose mass is M1 and M2 
is f equals to g m1 into m2 divided by r square. Now let's understand about the g. So the definition of g is there. So universal constant of gravitation which is g is numerically equal to the force of attraction between two unit masses placed at unit distance apart. That means when the two bodies have unit mass and separated by a unit distance then the value of g is equals to the force. Now what is the s unit of g? You know already the s unit of length that is meter and s unit of mass that is kilogram and s unit of force that is newton. But what is s unit of g that is universal gravitational constant? It is newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Okay, so it is s unit of gravitational constant newton meter square per kg square. And this g does not depend upon the nature and size of the bodies. It only depends on mass. And it does not depend upon the nature of the medium between the two bodies. It is completely independent of the nature between the bodies. So the nature of medium between the two bodies. And we know the value of g that is 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11. And because of this extremely small value of g, the gravitational force between even two big rocks is very small because of the small value of g. Okay, now let's understand the relation between small g, that is acceleration due to gravity and universal gravitation constant, that is capital G. So consider a body of mass m on the surface of the earth of mass capital M and radius capital R. So here we have a diagram. So diagram of uh, earth and uh, object which is on the surface of the earth. So mass of the earth is capital M and radius of the earth is capital R and the body's mass is small m. Now the gravitational force between the earth and the body according to Newton's law of gravitation is f equals to g m into m divided by r square and we call it as equation number one and next the weight of the body we already know that it is f equals to mg because weight is force and that force is equals to m into g where g is acceleration due to gravity and we call it is call it as equation number two so from equation number one and two mg equals to capital G capital M into small m divided by r square and m is small m is there on both sides of the equation so it is going to vanish so the acceleration due to gravity small g is equals to capital G into capital M divided by r square and we call it as equation number three and this equation gives acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth which is constant because uh, capital G which is acceleration due to gra sorry capital G which is a gravitational constant and this capital M which is mass of the earth and then we have a radius of the earth all these three quantities are constant that means the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth is also constant and its value is 9.8 meter per second square okay so this is the relation between acceleration due to gravity and gravitational constant. Now let's understand how this acceleration due to gravity g varies with the different positions. The first one, variation of acceleration due to gravity with altitude, that is height. So acceleration due to gravity g dash at height h above the surface of the earth of radius r is given by g dash equals to g into 1 minus 2h by r. So here g dash represents the acceleration due to gravity okay, at a height h. And this just g represents the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth. And the acceleration due to gravity at height h is given by g dash equals to g into 1 minus 2h by r. Where h is height of that object from the surface of the earth. And capital R is the radius of the earth. 
and from this expression it is very clear that acceleration due to gravity decreases with increase in height next one that is variation of acceleration due to gravity with the depth okay due to gravity with the depth so that equation that is acceleration due to gravity at a depth h is g dash equals to g into 1 minus h by r so this equation gives the acceleration due to gravity at a depth h below the surface of the earth and once again from this equation it is very clear that the acceleration due to gravity decreases with the increase in depth with increase in depth okay and when you compare these two equations okay acceleration due to gravity at height h and acceleration due to gravity below the surface of the earth okay at a depth h it is very clear that the acceleration due to gravity on the surface is maximum otherwise the acceleration due to gravity is going to decrease next the variation of acceleration due to gravity with the latitude with the latitude and the acceleration due to gravity with the latitude that is g dash is given as g dash equals to g into 1 minus omega square r into cos square theta divided by g okay so here this omega represents angular velocity of the earth angular velocity of the earth okay and theta is latitude okay theta is latitude at that point okay and this expression shows that acceleration due to gravity decreases due to the rotation of the earth due to the rotation of the earth that means the acceleration of the acceleration due to gravity depends on the angular velocity omega and there are two cases from this equation that is the first case is at the equator the theta is going to be zero right you already know that so cos theta is equals to one and the acceleration due to gravity at that point where theta equals to zero is at that is at the equator that is exactly at the equator is g into one minus omega square r by g r divided by g and now when we move to the pole when we can when we are going to consider a point at the pole then the theta is going to be 90 degree okay and at that point the value of cos theta that is cos 90 will be zero and then acceleration due to gravity simply equals to acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth that is g that is 9.8 meter per second square so from these two equations from these two cases the acceleration due to gravity is least at the equator and maximum at the poles okay so this is all about the variation of acceleration okay the variation of acceleration at different points and now there are some questions for you on the gravitation try to solve these questions thank you